Modern Tetris sucks. Tetris is meant for you to spend hours on something so simple without even realizing it. Modern Tetris couldn't be further away from that. No, this is real Tetris. Actually, this is Tetris DX. Anyways, I'm going to make a phone case that lets you play classic Tetris anywhere you go. The first thing I had to do for this was measure my phone case out on a piece of paper. Then I can scan those measurements onto the computer and model a custom phone case to fit all of our circuitry. And that worked perfectly. Except I'm pretty much required to do at least one thing wrong per video. And I did. Originally, I was going to use an Arduino Nano for this, which is what I made my measurements based on, until I realized that my Arduino Nano wouldn't be able to run the Tetris code. The Tetris code I'm using for this is called Tiny Tetris. Seeing that ruler made me feel like kind of a Tiny Tetris too. Tiny Tetris was written by AJ Russell, and I'll link the GitHub page to that if I remember, or if I care. It's not hard to find, just search up Tiny Tetris. Anyways, the Tiny Tetris code works with Arduino Uno and Nano, just not my Nano. My Nano is an ESP32, which I believe was released after Tiny Tetris, so I don't blame you for this not working, AJ. But that does mean my measurements are wrong, and now I have to redesign to include an Arduino Uno. I redid the measurements this time, and it's a lot better than this one, so it's okay. I didn't film me writing it because... Well, frankly, it was super boring, but, uh, yeah. Everything's good. That design seemed to be right, so I scanned it and put it into Fusion 360. But before I started modeling, I figured it'd probably be a good idea to see if this uh, circuit I was planning on using actually worked and lined up correctly with the drawing I made. It did not. The way the controls work in this circuit is that there's only one pin reading the signal on the Arduino side. Pressing buttons changes the resistance on that Arduino's pin. So when the Arduino reads a certain resistance, it's registered as a certain Tetris input, like you know, moving a block left or something. You only need to take up one pin in this control method as opposed to seven, so it's actually pretty efficient. That is, if you have all the right components for it. Again, I did not. You see, since we need to change the resistance quickly and specifically, or accurately, I guess, we need specific resistors. And it's better to use as few resistors as possible. 90% of the resistors I needed for this circuit, I didn't have. And because I was determined to not buy a bunch of resistors off Amazon, I decided to chain together 8 resistors per button and hope it just added up close enough to the correct value that it worked. Okay, so fortunately for me, the uh, crack job resistor math that I had no idea if it would work, did work. My gross resistor chain didn't work. I had to trial and error this for a week until finally, I bought 1,500 resistors off Amazon for $9. I wish I had just done that before, I needed more resistors for different projects anyways. And it's not like electrical components cost money, like, you just... Chinese electronics, that's all I'm saying. And it goes without saying, but my resistor chain did not work. But my specific resistors also didn't work, so there's a chance that the chain would have. Turns out the whole button circuit was wrong. I was using this clip art thing on the website instead of actual schematics, which is probably where I went wrong. Uh, you see, that right there is not a breadboard. That is a breadboard. These two things don't really work in the same way. So I decided to just cut out the whole resistor chain and button circuit thing and just build my circuit based off specifically the schematics. And that fixed it. I mean, my buttons are horrible, the inputs only register half the time, but 50% still something. The last part was to model the phone case. And did you guys know that Fusion 360 Personal is free? Because I didn't. I've been stealing the professional version this whole time. 
I suck at modeling, by the way. I did all of this in the most inefficient way possible, which was after procrastinating for two weeks. First thing I did was spend a day trying to patch a hole in my initial Fusion 360 sketch. Then I spent a day trying to thicken the walls, and then another to make the roof and cut out the buttons. But I did get it done. It was very inefficient, but it was done. I was relieved to finish the modeling because it was the only part I wasn't sure I could do. So I sent it off to the 3D printer. And then when it was halfway done printing, I realized I measured completely wrong. You see, I measured the outside of my phone case and not my actual phone, which means the 3D printed case is gonna be way too big for my phone. I could have fixed this had I measured my phone instead of the case, or I could have caught myself had I just set my phone down on the paper next to the phone case drawing. Too bad I'm stupid. But my stupidity actually saved me here. The case was not the right size for my phone to fit, but it was the perfect size for the phone case to fit, which I guess that makes sense. This whole thing was kind of like killing myself because I was depressed, but then I survived and the bullet killed the part of my brain that was making me sad. I think that actually happened once. This actually worked out for the better anyways though, because I need something to hold the circuit in place while I record using my phone, so I couldn't have been able to put my phone in there anyways. Alright, let's test this copper light. Okay. Those buttons are bad, but I, I can replace them and it'll work. Yeah, that's pretty much it though. Well, I like if you want a long play of this, I guess. It technically works, but so does a coffin dodger schlong. 2 out of 10. Please subscribe and follow me on the, all the places you guys know. Thanks for watching. Bye.